A2 further maths, Kuratowski's theorem. Right, so before we have a look at Kuratowski's theorem, what I'd like you to do is to see if you remember what is a planar graph. What is a planar graph? Okay, so just pause there, have a think about it. Okay, if you said it is a graph that is possible to be drawn so that no edges cross, you'll be quite correct. A planar graph is any graph that can be drawn so that none of the edges cross. So what I'd like you to do is think back to a complete graph, and I'd like you to think about what's the smallest value for a complete graph, whether it's K1, K2, K3, and so on, a complete graph, so that the graph is non-planar. All right, so the graph is non-planar. All right, so have a think about that. Okay, if you've forgotten what a complete graph is, a complete graph is one where every vertex is connected directly to every other vertex. So if that's a hint you needed, pause there, have another go. Okay, so let's see how far you got then. Now clearly K1 has just one vertex and no edges. So that can definitely be drawn without crossing any edges because it doesn't actually have any edges. So that's definitely planar. K2 means there's two vertices and they're directly connected to each other. Right? So that, that is again, definitely planar. Right? You can draw it without crossing. Uh, K3, so K3, three vertices. And if you connect those up, you're gonna make a triangle. Every vertex is directly connected to every other vertex. So it's a complete graph, but it's also a planar graph as well. K4, K4, got your three, four points. You're connecting those up. So each vertex is directly connected to each other. That one's gonna be connected to there, that one's connected to there, and these two still need to be connected up. And there's nothing wrong with doing a curved line to show that K4 is definitely a complete graph. Absolutely nothing wrong with K4. It can be drawn as a planar graph. And in fact, those are all complete graphs that are also planar. So all the complete graphs from K1 to K4 are planar graphs. The problem comes when you get onto K5. So you could draw your five points. You can certainly connect those up to make a pentagon. And you connect each of the vertices up to each of the others. No problems at all. Might have to add some curved edges in. And you get down to this point just here, and then you are stuck because this point here and this point here are not connected. So because they're not connected, we haven't got a complete graph yet. But if I try to connect those up, even directly, I'm gonna pass this line. So you might think I'm gonna do something different. So definitely, if you want to try to connect those up, it doesn't work, All right? But also, if you just try going curved, it still doesn't work. And it doesn't matter how many times you try it, there is no possible way to draw the complete graph K5 without crossing any edges. K5 is non-planar. Right? It's a non-planar graph. What I'd like you to do is explain to me, explain to me why no other complete graphs are planar. Alright, so if you know that K5 is definitely not planar, why is K6 not planar? Why is K7, why is K20 not planar? You can guarantee it, but why? Okay, just pause there, have a think about it. Okay, the problem with K6 is that if you try to draw K6, you'll notice that if you actually just removed one of the points or ignored one of the points, what you'd be left with is a K5 graph. And the problem is with a K5 graph is that we know it's not planar. So K6 is definitely non-planar as well because it contains K5 within it and K5 is definitely non-planar. So we can confidently say that any complete graph after K5 is non-planar because within the complete graph, it must have a K5 graph and a K5 graph is not planar. And that's the start of Kuratowski's theorem. The idea that a K5 graph is within the, the graph itself means it's definitely non-planar. We need to just look out for it. And that's what it's saying here. We'll come back to a subgraph in a minute. If you forgot what a subgraph is, don't worry. All right, so K5 is a subgraph of K6. It's part of that K6. And there we go. We can see that because that red part can't be drawn, the K6 definitely can't. Okay, so just so you remember what a bipartite graph is. So we've got a bipartite graph, K, N, M. At the moment, we've got a K, 3, 1. 
what I'd like you to do is think about what's the smallest value of n and m so the graph is still non-planar or becomes non-planar I should say okay so if you look at this one I've got here this is k31 you'll notice that I could definitely draw the complete graph from k31 because when we talk about complete graphs for bipartite for two groups we know that means that each member of this group should be directly connected to each member of this group. So I know that K31 is definitely a planar graph. OK, pause there, investigate. I want to know what's the smallest values of N and M so that it is non-planar. OK, so let's see how far you got then. So if I've got a second vertex, try connecting it up. That definitely works. We can see that there. All right, that every vertex here is connected directly to both of those. The trouble is, the moment I draw another one, I can connect up B and C, but there is no possible way to connect up A to Z without crossing. It doesn't matter how many times I try to do anything with it. I could try doing B round the back instead. I've still got the problem that I cannot connect A and Z up. It is just not possible. It's just not possible at all. So therefore, we know that the K nm graph the k33 graph is not possible is non-planar so a bipartite definitely is not planar but that also means that any complete graph any complete graph past k33 is also going to be non-planar because it, part of it will be containing k33 so k43 for example if you ignored one of the vertices in the four group, then you'll be left with K33. We know that's not planar, so therefore K43 is not planar. So if a graph contains K5 from the previous example or K33, that means that the actual graph itself is non-planar. Let's just go back to this idea of subgraph and make sure you understand what a subgraph is. So I'd like you to have a go at just drawing the example of a subgraph, any subgraph you like, of that graph just there. OK, there's loads of different options. I'm sure you've got a correct one. So if I want to draw a subgraph of it, I could do something like this, just to have that one. There you go. There's a subgraph completely ignoring B. So that's one example. It's not the only example. You can get rid of A if you wanted to and just have EDC. That is a subgraph. OK, or could have something like that doesn't have to be connected so AED and BC is a subgraph of that one so a subgraph is anything that is part of the original what we couldn't have is for something like BE connected up that would be a subgraph because it's not in the original graph right just a reminder as well on subdivisions what's a subdivision now, if we want to draw an example of a subdivision, what that means is we can literally delete an edge. It doesn't matter what edge we delete. So I'm going to delete CE. We can add a new vertex in the middle. And we can reconnect up C and E. And that's an example of a subdivision. All right, so that's a subdivision of the original. OK, so let's go look at Kurutowski's theorem then. What you need to do is you just need to get your notebooks out then, please. So we need to look at what Kurutowski's theorem states. Now, it states exactly what we've just been investigating. It says that if you've got a graph and it doesn't have to be a complete graph, it can be any graph. If you've got a graph and it contains either a K5 or a K33, we know it's definitely non-planar. Now, Kurutowski's theorem is the opposite to that. It's saying as long as it doesn't contain a K5 and a K33, the graph itself is planar. All right, so it's basically saying as long as you don't get as far as a K5 or a K33, then your graph is definitely possible to be drawn. All right, so as long as it doesn't contain a K5 or K33, it definitely can be drawn without crossing any edges. So in your notebooks, just make sure you've got your head in, got that first bit of sentence down about what it's theorem actually states. And let's just have a look at showing this. So I want to use Kurtisky's um, theorem to show whether this graph is planar or not planar. All right. In this case, it's stated it's definitely not planar. Now, to show it's not planar, what you need to do within that graph is find either 
a K5 graph or a K33 graph. And if you can find either of those, then we can know that the entire graph is not possible. Or sorry, not planar. OK, so pause there. See if you can spot either of those two within this graph just here. OK, so if you had this sort of question come up and you want to show it's not planar and you're looking for either a K5, uh, K5 or K33 graph, my advice first is just to make sure you're looking for vertices that got plenty of edges. H, for example, is no good because you've got three edges. So that's definitely not going to be a stopping point. But A has definitely got one, two, three, four, five edges coming out of it. So I think A is probably going to be part of it. OK, because that's going to cause you some issues. So you're looking just for a handful of coordinates that have quite a few edges coming out of them. And then what you can do is investigate whether now we've got a complete graph. So A is directly connected to C. A is directly connected to G. A is directly connected to J. And it is directly connected to I because it's a subdivision. So I can ignore E. All right, and that would make it a subdivision. Same with B just there. So although it's not directly connected, if I ignore these subdivisions just here, I can actually draw it as a K5 graph. OK, what about the others, though? Just to double check. Yep. G, A, G to I, G to J, J definitely connected to all of them and I definitely connected to all of them. So as long as I ignore the, the middle ones that cause it a subdivision, we can see in there I have a K5 graph. Now that K5 graph then cannot be planar and so because that part is not planar the entire graph is not planar all right so you're looking for that one bit of evidence the 1k5 graph in amongst the other graph okay so just pause there take down what you need okay so the same question again slightly different graph so why is this not planar so have a look you're looking for either a K5 or a K33 graph. Either of those two within here to show it's not planar according to Kurotowski's theorem. OK, let's see how far you got. So if you need a hint, I'll give you this as a hint. All right, so you've got that. So those three points just there can form one of the K three three group what you can do now is you can see if you can find the other vertices that make up the other three that cause a k three three graph within here okay and if you thought actually i can see if, if that's one of them then that's connected to there and that's connected to those two that one is connected to g which is also connected to those two and also j which is also connected to those two so these three vertices just here are connected in a way that makes a K33 graph. We can see that each of those vertices is connected directly to each of those three vertices and each of the blue vertices are connected to each of the red vertices. So it's a complete graph for K33. Now we know that that graph on its own, forget everything else that's going on, that graph on its own, that K33 graph just there, is going to be um, not planar. So therefore, the whole graph is not planar. And that's what we mean by Kuratowski's theorem. Now, if that wasn't in there, and there wasn't any K5s or K33 graphs, we could with confidence say that that is a planar graph. Right? As long as it doesn't contain anything like this. Okay. And notice you're ignoring things. So if you're looking and thinking, well, that's not a K33 graph because B and J are connected up. If F was just a kind of thought of as a subdivision. Now, yes, that's true. But remember, you're looking at just ignoring everything else apart from just the bit that you're looking at there. Only the K33 section. OK, so what I'd like you to do is just have a go at the exercise on page 1.5 on page 19.